All right, here we are again. It's the uh, two o'clock hour here on Ward Wrestling Live. Uh, welcome everybody. We have another amazing college wrestling coach in our country. Uh, not only does he coach men's, but he also coaches women's over at Greensboro College. As we all know, women's are growing at a rapid pace, probably the number one growing sport. So it's a good time to get that program going. He was a two-time New Jersey State qualifier. He still holds the high school record for wins and pins out of his high school in Jersey. Uh, he wrestled at Davidson, D1, SoCon runner-up, NCAA qualifier. And uh, he's here with us today, Coach Kevin Birmingham, from uh, from that hotbed of Jersey to Greensboro in the Carolinas. How you doing, sir? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, man, it's, it's an absolute pleasure. And uh, just to get the opportunity to talk to another coach uh, in our college uh, in our college world, that's awesome. I know you guys are are Division three there. Uh, it's what it's it's only you're only the second men's coach in history there, and then uh, you just started the women's program recently. And uh, how are things going during this off season? How has this affected kind of getting new blood and and getting that freshman class in there? Um. So so far, off season going pretty well. I mean. Uh, Obviously, recruiting has been changed up a little bit with uh, visits and things like that. Uh, but now that we're starting to pick up again, we can have some within protocol, um, you know, the school guidelines, you know, we can have tours, we can get people on campus. So that's really starting to pick up a lot more for us now. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, we're, we're happy about what's going on. The, the women's program being added was huge. Um, first one in state, state history. Um, and actually Coach Soto, who was on here earlier, uh, just followed suit and they started the second one. So, you know, we want to keep that, that wave going. It's really good for the sport. Um, it, it's good for the girls that are growing in a sport right now that uh, right now at least has a lot smaller number of college choices. So, you know, it, the pool is really big right now. So, Girls are really excited for these opportunities. And eventually, I can't wait to get to the point where we surpass the Vision 3 amount, you know, with how many women's programs we have. So, again, overall, I mean, we're really excited. Uh, the, the eight or nine guys that we have coming in, as of right now, we still have a few more on the line. Um, and, you know, I'm just excited for hopefully some normalcy with the schedule next year. Yeah, hopefully uh, things get um, get opened up for you full blown and uh, you get everybody back into the room and you get to do your thing, right? Exactly. Well, talk a little bit about uh, Greensboro College Wrestling and, uh, and, and, and I know you just mentioned uh, your, your programs, but talk about the culture and the philosophy and everything that, that uh, you put those expectations on, on your athletes and talk about uh, the expectations you have academically for them as well. And, and how you achieve both those goals with them. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, the, like you mentioned, you know, I'm, I'm only the second head coach, um, the former head coach, Eric Wins, who's currently at, um, the assistant coach at American university. He was my coach at Davidson college. Um, and you know, I, I went back, um, I, my first coaching career, gig was at Mount Union uh, under Bill Shindell, who's at Adrian. And, you know, he told me a lot of ins and outs of the college division three, how it works. And Mount Union is, you know, a great program to kind of set that bar to, to chase. And so when, when I came back down, my wife living in Durham, uh, you know, I had to be back. We were engaged, planning a wedding. So had to move back, wanted to move back. Um, was into teaching and stuff and turn around, got the opportunity after coaching the Fargo team, coach wins called me and said, Hey, I've, you know, an assistant coach gig. Um, so were you, you're interested. I think you'd be great for the program. Immediately said yes. Um, because since seventh grade, you know, my mom and dad, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up uh, a college wrestling coach, you know, through and through. Uh, and I, I really fell in love with the sport in middle school when, you know, the teams were, you know, getting more competitive. It wasn't youth tournaments anymore. There was a lot more 
chess pieces. You know, I, I learned as a coach, you know, sometimes in high school and middle school, you know, moving those guys, bumping them up, getting them to cut down that extra weight class. It's all like a, a moving chess piece for the head coaches in college, not as much, but when I got there, it made it a lot easier for, you know, that normalcy that coach Wentz was trying to, you know, inflict on the guys. When I came, you know, he helped me 10 times, you know, become a 10 times better wrestler at Davidson. Uh, you know, I qualified for nationals three years on there was, you know, the three years I really made growth. Um, and it really was expressing just like a lot of college programs out there being the best that you can be on and off the mat. And, you know, if you're able to do that, then you can have success. It's not guaranteed or anything, but being the best that you can when you're in the room, when you're out of the room, representing the program. Um, we always say, you know, Coach Wynn said this to me when he was my coach, and I say this to the guys, I, I would love 10 national champs. I would love, you know, 20 All-Americans within the you know next four years and stuff. But I'd really like to know that they were better husbands, fathers, um, you know, employees, employers, whatever it may be. Um, because eventually for a lot of us, wrestling does end, you know, in, in the sense of you might not be involved in coaching or you might not, you know, your son or daughter may not wrestle. So you might not be able to go to a Saturday all day tournament and, you know, you miss those. But at the same time, you know, what can you take from the sport and take it, you know, into life? And if you're able to be involved in the sport, then by all means, we want you to be involved. You know, it's the most beautiful sport in the world. That's awesome. Yeah. So um, obviously uh, right now you're, you're, it's the recruiting process. Uh, you guys uh, have hit the virtual recruiting world. I, I joke with, with some coaches and say, man, your recruiting budget is not getting touched right now. So you, <laughs> you probably have like a big, chicken wing party or something when they're recruiting. yeah because uh, you're not having to fly anywhere take any parents to eat do any of that stuff that you do um, but so I, I know that you just mentioned the kind of the intangibles you're looking for in a kid <clears throat> also talk a little bit about it I'm a kid out there and and maybe I'm at that division three NAIA club NWCA wrestler that's kind of where I'm at and I've got a couple different schools talking to me, uh, you know, maybe I'm here in the scholarship, maybe some are offering money, some are not. Uh, why do I choose D3? Why do I choose Greensboro? Why do I choose Coach Birmingham? Okay, yeah, um, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because one big thing, obviously, is a Division three program, you know, we don't offer the athletic scholarship. Um, and, and I think sometimes a lot of students and families like hearing the word scholarship, um, you know, and, and I live that life, um, you know, for me, I would, what I'm looking for in that sense is someone that's not chasing, chasing the dollar. Now, when I say that, don't get me wrong, it is a huge financial decision, um, you know, but you need to really figure out the best fit for you, um, you know, both academically and athletically. Um, you know, you go division one, I, I went that, you know, D one, D two, the way I felt, um, now it's a job that I love and I wanted to be a part of, but not everyone, when they get to D one or D two, truly understand the expectations it, it, the way I say it in, in the sense of you are being paid by the, by this team to be here, you know, in a sense. And it, it sometimes it may be a thousand dollars. Sometimes it might be the full tuition, but in the sense that you are expected, you know, the level of expectation and less flexibility is, you know, risen at D1, D2. I didn't go home, you know, during Christmas break ever, you know, r rarely ever, you know, just with, with the tournaments that we went and sometimes at D3, you don't. But, you know, at Greensboro College, like the way we set our schedule, we do get everything done by the semester. We give those breaks. You know, it is important. And honestly, chasing the dream, you know, if you really think that you belong at D1, then by all means, pursue that dream. Um, you know, that's how I felt. I wasn't the blue chip collar, you know, uh, blue chip like athlete recruit out of high school. And you know, there are some kids that never got to go to the national tournament that were way better than me in high school. 
Yeah, but let's be honest too. I, I think I wrote down something I was reading. Let me see. I've got all these notebooks here because yeah, we first started the show. I was just winging it, and now I actually learned how to. I learned how to read and write a little bit, so I <laughs> good how to how to do this. But oh, we're all picking up new habits now. But let's be honest, right? I mean, there's 792 max scholarships uh, that are given out, um, and less than half of 1% of all of them, of, of those wrestlers that are available for those scholarships are gonna get the full the full amount. You know, I, I think it said that, I think I was reading where it said that a full scholarship is like somewhere around $10,500, uh, but 97% of the time, it's not a full scholarship unless you're like the upper, upper, you know, Yanni, Spencer. I I say this all the time. If you're not if you're not like a scene Rutherford kind of guy, you're you're gonna you're gonna be paying some to go to college, you know. And that's just the reality of the sport: basketball, football. You get offered a scholarship. It's understood that it's full tuition, you know that that's just how Division One works with that, um, you know. But for me. The way, you know, and I had plenty of buddies that are, D, you know, D1 coaches, D2 coaches, you know, they say they split up those scholarships to be able to get the, you know, more guys and stuff. And, and what I want, you know, what I want to convey is with us, you know, the academic sense, I think in general in Division Three, is a, a much higher prevalent situation. I think a lot of your schools, aren't they? Uh... You know, like I talked to one guy, it's they specialize in chiropractic. So if you're going to be a chiropractor, it doesn't matter what division athletically that school is. They got the best chiropractor program in the country. So exactly that's where you go, whether it's D3, NAIA, whatever, uh, that's where you go. So maybe do, do, does Greensboro have a specialization or whatever it's called to, to say, OK, we have a nursing program. I know you mentioned your wife. And our nursing program is one of the top in the country. If you want to be a nurse, then women's wrestling is for you here, right? Or right. Um, so I, I wouldn't say like we, we have a, a specialized um, education is huge here. Um, education, criminal justice, sports medicine. That's a lot of, you know, the wrestlers um, that we have currently, you know, that they're going through business as well. The one unique thing with Greensboro College and just Greensboro in the world, I say this all the time, and you know, some parts of the state are going to disagree with me, and that's fine. But Greensboro is the wrestling capital, you know, of of the state. Uh, the state tournaments held here, the state duels are held here, Super Thirty Two is held here. Um, you know, there there are all these really great uh, you know events that we have. Um, so I, I want to start adding, you know, to some of that, but at the same time in, in the, the academic sense, when I say wrestling is, you know, a big part of Greensboro, if you want to, you know, when you're growing up in wrestling, I think some people turn around and say, I, I want to go to, uh, you know, I want to be at the Coliseum, which is in Greensboro, you know, so what I say to recruits is like you at one point have said, I, I want to be at Greensboro. So why not here? And when they ask about those things like, hey, well, you know, I'm interested in studying, you know, whatever it may be that we don't specifically offer, what we have with Greensboro having so many colleges around, it, it's a basically our system where you can go to and attend other classes at other colleges and still get earn those credits, um, you know, through our connoisseurum. And it, for me, I think that right there. You know, just because we don't have specifically what you're looking for, we can look into, you know, are there other colleges around that you can fill those voids, you know, if you're going into a nursing. So right now we don't have nursing. Like a satellite program that can yes. be to what you're doing. Exactly. And, and we have so many colleges around us that, you know, we're in downtown Greensboro. We're, in, you know, in a small city, you know, we were just talking about before the show. Charlotte has 2 million people. When we compare it to like Philadelphia, Jacksonville, places that we're a little bit more familiar with, you know, it's not, it's not even that big in Greensboro, you know, it gives you that city life, but at the same time, you're near the mountains, you're near lakes, you know, you get that feel. Yeah. And, and you're, you're, you're right in the middle of Raleigh and Winston-Salem. So you, 
Raleigh, Winston Salem, um, High Winston Point, Salem, Durham. Best Mexican food you'll ever eat, Winston Salem. I remember. I've heard, I've heard that. I, I still haven't had any. Yeah, I remember traveling when I was younger, and they would. Uh, There's this one little Mexican place, and uh, they used to do like these bucket of baby Coronas. And they'd come okay. Out metal bucket and they'd have these little baby Coronas in there. First time I ever saw little baby Coronas. <laughs> it was pretty neat. I was like, man, that's a good bottle. Well, hey, if, you, if you're up here for, you know, if they're still holding Super 32, um, if you come, my, my high school coach came down and we suggested uh, crafted the art of taco. I'm telling you, you want some good uh, Hispanic cultured food with some Southern culture mix. Uh, I'm telling you. It, it well, I got to get up to, uh, I got to get up there because I got to go see my, my my new my newfound buddy and coach sent us over there at Campbell. Oh came, yeah. Come on, come by and visit. So I gotta get up and visit. And uh, we did the camps up in Boone last year. Okay. So definitely maybe I need to just do like a, a Carolina crawl. <laughs> oh well yeah. And and again, you know, that's that kind of going back to what we were talking about with like the recruiting challenges. Like obviously when you have North Carolina is the second most D1 programs in the country. And they're good. And, and they're good. <laughs> so, you know, and, and, you know, Davidson was a school that I went to, you know, my alma mater. And, uh, you know, they're doing everything right to get them to that. Comp- they have Coach Dance, Chad Walsh, who's a really good buddy of mine. Um, and Coach Lossier, I mean, when I was in college, we had 1.9 scholarships, you know, to, to offer. And, and he, he's just fundraised the heck out of it, you know, to get as many as we, as we possibly can. And I'm glad you talked a little bit about Davidson because I was going to ask you about that, but uh, yeah. And it's a question I asked um, uh, John Mark the other day too, is talk about like the SOCON seems like that, that best kept secret. They got a tough, tough schedule. What was it like being at Davidson and getting to compete in that, in that oh. SOCON? Oh yeah. Um, I, I had some, I, I, I was actually talking to coach Soto the other day, he's coming up for um, our pride field event. And I was giving him some details about that. And <laughs> I was talking to him about, you know, for first, first year was, you know, eye opening for sure. Um, I chose Davidson to go there to be a, you know, not guaranteeing, but knowing that I had a, a chance without red shirting to get four years of a starting D one position. Um, other than that, the other schools like, you know, similarly built, you know, Franklin and Marshall, just the Pennsylvania, you know, just a small liberal arts PA school, you know, so I, I knew where I was at in that sense. Um, you know, if I went to like a Ohio state, I'm going to have to red shirt and I'm going to have to beat four or five guys just to, you know, sniff the mat. So for me, the way I looked at it when freshman year happened, I went to a VMI tournament and it was a freshman, sophomore open tournament. I wrestled three Campbell guys and I, I won and I was really excited and was like, you know, hey, maybe I, I am pretty good at this, you know, yeah. wrestling, wrestling deal. So we, we wrestled um, South Dakota State and Campbell the following week and I met the starter of Campbell and you know my mom and dad drove down we're like yeah our son's three and now he's doing great I think he's gonna do great tonight I gave up I think total like nine minutes of riding time uh, <laughs> and you know it's just so you went from the freshman group to uh, I, I went from <laughs> basically like you know, you're, you're JV to varsity, like in a heartbeat. And so, you know, I, freshman year was, like I said, eye opening. Um, you know, I've always been a pinner. Um, so I've watched Jay Jaggers hit that cradle one time on TV and said, all right, that's it. I'm going to learn that move. And that's kind of, you know, my style. And, uh, so had, had reasonably, good records you know but in my head I'm thinking I've never had a losing record in my you know in my life in almost anything (laughs) so when I was 14 and 15 and then 11 and 13 and what made it even worse was fresh from the sophomore year I went I did actually worse you know statistically speaking um 
but I was like losing two to one or three to one or eight to six, you know, so I'm, I'm closing the gap. So sophomore year was definitely like the, at the end of it, it's like, I don't care what has to happen. I'm, I'm going to the national tournament. Like yeah, I, I played the place at conference yeah, and you know, I think wrestling guys like Chat, you know, teams like Chattanooga, App State, and, and like the history in them. No, historically, Davidson's not the best wrestling program. We all know Davidson because Steph Curry, you know, made that insane run. We we know that. But for me, having that exposure on a conference level, and no, I don't think it's necessarily, you know, you can't compare the SOCON to the Big Ten. You you just can't. But when I would go, you know, on a Thursday night and wrestle Chattanooga, it was like, this is a wake up call of what the national tournament is going to be like. Well, and look at the wrestlers the SOCON are getting now. I mean, exactly. Uh, I mean, I know, I know a couple of SOCON schools right now that have seven, eight, 10 Florida State championships in them right now. Exactly. And so, uh, that, that's pretty cool. But yeah, I, I just, uh, Seems like it's uh, and the out of conference wins that they're starting to get against the ACC and the bigger programs are 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 looking great and that's awesome and we're uh yeah is there like a statue of, of Steph there on the campus no no but he when he signed that Under Armour deal he ended up like I know donating a big like basketball facility and you know it, it's real the campus is great um it's actually cool when I was the assistant coach the last couple of years at Greensboro, uh, we went to, we went to Davidson and, uh, or one year we hosted Davidson and last year I got to go back. So, you know, again, we're, we're out there, you know, I know we're, we knew where Davidson was at and, and right now we're not wrestling, you know, they're not on schedule, but we want to wrestle D1 guys, you know? And, and I think, you know, just maybe me being an alum and coach wins being an old coach, like coach Lawson was like, all right, yeah, we'll keep this going. But, you know, for them, I was happy to see them kind of drop that from the schedule because I want them to be growing. You know, when I was in college, I, I didn't like, you know, losing to Division three teams, you know, when, when we were, in, uh, you know. Because you get to do those open is what I was told, right? Division three, the club teams, the NAIA, Division two. There's these large open tournaments that are flooded with kids from all divisions, right? And is if I'm if I'm correct, isn't that you may have your D3 starters there, your NAI starters there. But as far as the D2 and D1s, they have kids that haven't made the starting position yet, but they're still really good and need to get that time. And yes. they, they get opportunities to wrestle as well. So, well, and, and you know, and that's I, I think the stigma, of, you know, whether a kid is a division three kid or a D2. Yeah, there there are some some situations, but. You know, a really good example is like our, our 141 pounder this year, High Sue. Um, he was our national qualifier and was actually named the NWCA All American. And, you know, we, we sent him up to universities last year and, or U23s, it's called now. And he went four and two and it, you know, had a really epic corner, you know, comeback match against a Cornell guy. And, you know, no, were all those guys starters at those programs? No. But are they training in those rooms? Like, I, when I look at Haisu, I could see him truly being, you know, a Division One guy. But at the same time, he knew the fit of Greensboro was a better fit in the sense of, and, and maybe a better fit academically, but in the sense of maybe I need that smaller structure. Maybe I need 20 people in a class and for the professor to know who I am so I can get that help instead of going to, you know, a big lecture hall, signing your name and being like, apparently you can just leave. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I've heard that. Did you see Frank on yesterday? Coach Beasley? I, I did. I did, wasn't able to catch his. Not Beasley. Uh, Coach Welch. Oh, um, at University of Mount Olive. Yeah. He said that, that it wasn't because Beasley's at George Mason, which is right. Here. Um, uh, but coach Welch said the same thing. He's like, man, these, he, he goes, I wish I kind of had that smaller classroom. Cause he said, we were clicking buttons and <laughs> exactly. Well, and, and I, I lived that life, you know? So for me, um, 
again, that's what the, you know, these kids need to do their research in, you know, in that sense is what's going to fit me. Number one, I don't care what division it is academically, what it's going to fit you the best, because unless you want to be a wrestling coach in college, and I promise you, it's not like you can just walk in and be like, I'm going to become a head coach. You know, you, you have to put some time in, you're going to have to do some stuff, um, you know, to earn your stripes. What are you going to do afterwards? So academically, number one, number two, financially, you know, and, and when I say obviously financially, it's always a big choice, but there aren't many colleges with, you know, where you're not paying thousands of dollars. And number three, athletically, making sure, you know, that you, you are getting the best fit for your program, what they preach, what, you know, what maybe the, you know, here's, like I said, why did I choose Davidson? I saw on the roster a, a handful of 41 and 49 pounders. If I, if I look at a roster at, you know, some of these high level D2 programs, D1 programs, they might have 50 guys on a team, you know, that there's 10 weight classes and that doesn't mean they always start off that way or, you know, even 40. But if you want four years in, four years out and you want actual experience, like the way I sell my recruiting is you can come here and you're going to wrestle 10, 15 matches almost every year. I set the schedule that way because my logic here is if I know someone might be the guy at the end of the year in November, what if he gets hurt? And I'm only wrestling him or her the whole season. No one else is getting exposure besides those couple open tournaments that everyone goes to. What's going to happen when I, I turn off the spotlights, you know, and, and the fog machine comes out and you're, you're walking out on the green carpet to go, you know, wrestle in front of a few hundred people. We're, you know, how are you going to be ready for that? How can I justify, you know, sending a guy out there if they've never lived that? So, you know, we do set our home event. Am I NC State? Am I Duke or UNC? Do I have all that stuff? No, but our parents are, you know, donors. They really helped it out where we want to make it, you know, with UNCG being cut, we want to make it where people on a Wednesday night can turn around and be like, I can't wait for the Greensboro match. You know, it's kind of, you know, you, you have the LED lights, the green fog coming up, you know, the, the lights turn off, their own walkout music, you know, no, it's not going to be an arena filled with people, but we can get a few hundred people in there. And the cool thing for Coach Wentz and I throughout this whole time um, has really been the UNCG guys that the, when the program did get cut, a lot of them stay around. A lot of them are still in the area. So when the program started, they've been like coming to matches, you know, they miss it. And they say, you know, thank you. You know, that that's what I was told after one match. Like, thanks for making this happen. Like, you know, this is a lot of fun. And yeah. like, that's what's, that's, you know, the goal for, you know, any college coach should be, you know, make the program the best on campus and something that people want to talk about. And then you start seeing all the programs really amp up, you know, well, hey, wrestling's doing this and really well. So, we got to hit up our donors and we got to hit up this, you know, and make it more exciting. You know, why, why can't Greensboro college, you know, and all athletics have 500 people at events. Yeah. It's so, awesome. So, and, and, so, so, yeah, I mean, it, like I said, it, it's been so, such a fun journey, you know, in, the, in that regard. And, you know, being, being 27, I'm, I'm still learning a lot and I'm still hitting up, you know, coach Wentz and, Blaze Shade, you know, at UNC Pembroke, you know, he's younger than me, but still picking people's brains, you know, and figuring out, hey, what are you doing over here? And what did you guys do for this event? And, you know, how can we make it run smooth? And, you know, that's that's what it's all about. I'm these really are all the things this that, uh, These are all the things you go through when building a program, right? Exactly. Yeah, it's awesome. I said we want to be the Warburg of the South, so. <laughs> and you spoke about growing up through that uh, – that youth grind uh, up in Jersey and you got to, to see a lot of great people and uh, uh, it's pretty cool. It's obviously taken you a long way. You've had a great career so far and man, that's really super cool. I've got, uh, I've got 10 questions for you. You ready? All right. All right. Well, I'm going to take you back home. So pork roll or sloppy Joe's pork roll all day. Ponzerati's or cheesesteak. Cheesesteak. And fun fact, I, 
actually had cheesesteak today from uh, Jersey Mike's and my mom's probably going to be bringing pork roll down to me tomorrow. When she ah. <laughs> so, uh, Rippers or Italian hot dog? Oh, Italian hot dog. <laughs> they got to both be really good. <laughs> uh, Mountain Creek or Six Flags? Six Flags all day long. <laughs> King the car, baby. <laughs> Maury's Pier or the Steel Pier? I'm going to go Maury's Pier just because it's more south. <laughs> AC or Jersey Shore? AC. Right, live right on the AC Expressway. That's a, that's a hop, skip, and a jump. <laughs> Down there. Adventure Aquarium or Cape May Zoo? Cape May Zoo. All right. Patterson or the Palisades? <sighs> Patterson. <laughs> uh, Mario Mason said Palisades. Uh, all right, these two questions are, are new ones I added. Uh, flow or track? Oh, I'm going to say both because for different, you know, that, that one's too hard. Uh, different content, you know. I, I, I'm a big bracket guy, so I could look through bra I If you see my office and my rooms, like I have so many brackets of all the states, you know, and highlight. How about this? How about this? Better run tournament flow or track. Oh. I'm I'm gonna say track based on history and doing it for a lot a longer time. Um, but I did go to Fargo and Flo did a good job when when I was there. So I don't want to I don't want to seem like I'm bashing Flo, but yeah, I would just say track for it's it. I understand. All right, so last one. Uh, the Catskill Mountains or the Hudson River? The mountains, because that's what makes our bread so good. <laughs> the water, right? The water. The water. Well, for us, it would be the water, but the yeah. water, yeah. <laughs> it really is the water. If, if you don't have, I'm telling you, you get a cheesesteak anywhere else in the country, it's really not the truth because the bread is what makes the cheese steak anyone can put cheese and steak and peppers together and onions but if you don't have the right roll it's game over yeah so there's a uh there's a las Padas down here and uh up in the delaware valley there there's the original las Padas mm -hmm. right down the street from that nifty 50s where you can get a soda with 52 flavors yeah yeah i and remember that but yeah, definitely you need those. Uh, what are they called? The the Moromoso rolls, Mamosima. Uh, the uh, there's a type of roll that comes from up there. I, I know what you're talking about, but I don't know the name either. But I, all I know is Amoroso <laughs> rolls. There they That's are. It. And uh, and we have Wawa now down here. So I've been hearing some mixed feelings that uh, Royal Farms is slowly but surely taking over the Wawa fade and or fab in south jersey and i don't know how i feel about that I, i've been isolated in north carolina so long so I, I gotta you know take a trip up and check it out but wawa i remember coming home from you know New, you know davidson it'd be like two in the morning i finishing up you know my drive i would stand in wawa and not even buy anything i would just be in wawa just to get it in just oh, to get it in. unbelievable like uh what do I, I tell people, I moved to, I went up to Philly when my wife was in school. And uh, this is 20 something years ago. And um, I start working over in Doylestown at Fred Bean's family of dealerships. And um, I'm working selling cars and, you know, what am I, 22? I don't know what I am, 22, 23. And uh, this guy goes, hey, you like subs? I'm like, yeah, I like subs. Come on, I got this sub place. And we pull into a gas station. I'm like, bro, you need gas? <laughs> He's like, no, this is where the subs are. I go, dude, it's, you know, the Wawa 25 years didn't look like the Wawa today, right? No. And, uh, and I walk in and there's the, it's a sub shop. He's like, yeah, get it. <laughs> and I got it. And ever since that day, when I saw Wawa start to come down here over the last couple of years, and people were like, yo, what the hell is this place? I'm like, 
go get you some. <laughs> now, now let me let me ask you this: When do you guys have Hoagie Fest? No. Okay, so oh, yeah. Hoagie Fest at Wawa. At Wawa, where they do like the four ninety nine subs. Yes. So yes. so now are you are you over the idea that it's called a sub, and have you accepted that it's called a Hoagie? Well, Hoagies, I understand. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> everyone everyone's like who came up with that who calls it a hoagie and i'm like i don't yeah, know yeah. that's uh, my whole yeah, life that's what it's got a lot of good stuff but yeah i mean i guess i mean so do you go like jim's tony luke's the spadas pats gino's jim's is my favorite jim's on yeah. south Street, right yeah and J and jim's i like it because you see the work like that's where you know they're doing everything in front of you, and you're the you're just line, moving. The yes. line goes right around the block. You're standing yes. up in line, <laughs> but they they keep it moving, and you see these guys on the grill, and they they are working it. And to be honest with you, that's what I you know that's what I loved about where I grew up. That that it's kind of weird. You know, that Philly blue blue collar you. attitude. I lo I it's loved it. Weird to me that you were like seven years old when I was there. <laughs> Are, let me ask you this are you know are you an eagles fan now uh, i was always an eagles fan because my grandmother uh raised us in miami but she was from south philly so uh, she raised us on the dolphins and the eagles so we always grew up that way and uh it, it that's was a, good. that's a that's a great grandmother right there then yeah it, it's a good thing and um we just had i remember uh being on South Street, and there used to be a Denny's there. I don't know if it's still there or not, but there used to be a Denny's there, and you would find AI there after the games. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He'd be there uh, eating and stuff, and I was a good time. Man. It was a good time. And there used to be a place, and I can't eat. I can't remember the name, and people ask me about it. There was a place in, uh, in I think it was right outside of Center City. You know where, like, the warehouse district is and all the pool halls and stuff like that? Right. Oh, by the river and it they used to have this they used to call it the one pounder the steak sandwich and you'd go with your buddies i'd go with my buddies and was you'd ask for a cheeseburger huh cheeseburger cheeseburger maybe I, I don't remember but you used to get another roll they'd give you an extra roll because they gave you so much meat yeah i i've done a one pound burger it was a cheeseburger cheeseburger but i don't know if it's the same one that you're talking about no it was a one pound steak sandwich yeah, no. It was a yeah, we did a burger. We didn't. It can't. It can't be that place, then. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, it was super cool. And I. I only found it because I. My wife was in school, so to to leave her alone, I got involved in these. Uh, they have these pool clubs up there where you could shoot nine ball on Wednesdays and eight balls on eight ball on Sunday or whatever. And uh, I would. I got to meet people through that. And the one guy was like, "Hey, you don't know pool till you come down to." south philly and play pool in these these pool halls and we'd walk in and man there'd be you'd have like the bar room that had the bar tables and all the homies would be back there and then you'd see all the big shots behind glass on yep. the professional tables i mean like professional girls too like i think they used to call her like the black widow or something she'd be in there oh yeah. I, re I remember hearing that name too yeah and uh it's pretty cool man philly's a fun town i love that town man oh yeah i i, I love growing up with it um I, I definitely shed a tear when when the Eagles finally won the Super Bowl, and you know it, it was a whole city winning it. And it was yeah. I told I said my grandma could rest in peace now when that yep. happened. <laughs> that 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 culture though, yeah, coming from there, and you know my high school team kind of carried that same culture. You know, just again blue blue collar, hard nose. You know. We, we, some of the kids on our team, man, they didn't even start wrestling until their sophomore year of high school, and they were, you know, when it, competing for regional titles just because they, they just were per. It's like just per square feet, Philadelphia yep. has the best food, the best fun, the best just things around, man. It's it's uh, it is a fun town. Uh, Brent Branson, Philly in the show, Parking Wars is the greatest. <laughs> <laughs> Parking Wars is great. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, that's funny. Yeah, man, it's uh, it's awesome, man. I'm sure we could have. I mean, I remember going on Sundays to the old vet, and I could get in for a couple bucks and sit up in the 700 section just to stay out of my wife's way. And I'd watch, 
I'd be right over home plate up in the 700 level. It would be me and like no one else because that was like the Phillies were just okay back then. Yeah. And, uh, I have a piece of the vet actually right now, like in the house with me, uh, like just a, a piece of the turf. Yeah, I do too. Good for you, man. Piece of the grass and yep. I have the bench. <laughs> yeah, I did that whole thing. It's cool. It's cool. Well, hey, man, I'm sure we could start getting into Philly stuff and talk forever, but uh, I got to I gotta get off and uh, do my thing, get prepared for my next show. But listen, I've got the live wrestling exchange that I just started. It's a private group inside of Ward Wrestling Live. Please join and share all your stuff about Greensboro in there. Share any camps, clubs, recruiting things, whatever you want to do. Uh, start discussions. Um, I just want to put a, make a little place where you can interact. And um, it's only got like 180 people right now. I just started it, but uh, jump in there, share it, uh, post your information in there, and uh, and please share the show on Ward Wrestling Live. And and uh, let's keep in touch, man. I, it was a pleasure to meet you, and I wish you the best. And uh, Greensboro has another fan, so I really I really appreciate you know having me on and everything that you're doing, Daniel. It's uh, like I said, it's really good for the sports, good exposure for individuals programs everything and, and you know more people like you you know hopefully not more more shows but yeah. more people like you you know in the sport it's, it's a better thing so seriously thank you again and what a great conversation yeah thanks man and it's crazy that not just florida people are seeing this now the whole country is and, and they're coming exactly and jumping on and it's fun oh uh, this this has been great and i can't wait to keep watching man yeah man take it easy thank you thank so you much. have a good one Sir, you too.